we give Jesus praise, amen. Come on, you can do better than that. Can we give Jesus praise? Hallelujah. We can be seated in, in heavenly places. Joshua 5. Let's open our Bible to the book of Joshua, chapter number 5. Be greeted in the awesome and wonderful name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, it is a pleasure once more to, to stand and and share the word this wonderful Sunday. Um, open with me to the book of Joshua, chapter number five. So in this portion, um, greet your neighbor and tell your neighbor, move with all the medis. Amen. The pastor loves you. Amen. With the love of God. Amen. <laughs> so the book of Joshua, chapter number five. So in Joshua 5, they've, they've passed over Gilgal. In Joshua 5, they have set the, the memorials. Um, there are two memorials they set in Joshua 4. There's a memorial they set in Jordan. There's a memorial they set in Gilgal. That is Joshua 4. In Joshua 3, they, they cross over the Jordan. They prepare to cross and they cross Jordan. In Joshua 2, they send spies into Jericho. In Joshua 1, they are mourning the death of Moses. So give them mourning of the death of Moses. And then the annunciation of Joshua as leader. Joshua 2, he sends out spies into the promised land. Joshua 3, uh, they are crossing the Jordan. And God magnifies Joshua in the sight of all Israel. Joshua 4, they set a memorial, two memorials of 12 stones, one in Jordan, the other in Gilgal. Joshua 5, they've crossed, they've done all this. Now, all nations have heard about what God has done. Joshua 5, verse 1. And it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the side of the Jordan westward, and all the king of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel until we were passed over, that their heart melted, neither was there any spirit in them anymore because of the children of Israel. Their hearts melted, there's no spirit anymore. This is the right time to attack. Your enemy is disoriented, your enemy is afraid, they have no heart in them. Military tactics, this is the time to attack. Guess what? God says wait six weeks. It is the right time to attack. It is the right time to pursue. God says wait some time. What do you mean, God? They are, they are afraid. If you look at the word that we, that we were passed over, they are, they are direct witnesses of this. They are not taking a report from spies. It's things they are witnessing the land themselves that we can even feel it. They are afraid because of us. Now is the time to attack. Now is the time to take the land. If you are a military strategist, if you are a commander in the war, now is the time to attack. Now is the time. There is no better time than now. Amen. Verse 2. 
At that time, the Lord said unto Joshua, Medium does not speak better strategy then. At that time, the Lord said unto Joshua, at that time, when it's the right moment to attack, when it's the right moment to go and take, yeah. Medium comes with its own agenda. Mm-hmm. Medium comes with its own agenda. When it's the right time for you to get a promotion, eh? when it's the right time for you to, to, to learn that deal, when it is the right time, we didn't come to his own agenda. When I'm busy pursuing a degree, huh? and you're almost there, at that time, Mudimu comes with his own agenda. At that time, at that time, when you, when you are at the brink, you are at the edge, Murima comes with his own agenda at that time. Are we reading the same verse? Or am I reading a different one? Am I reading a different one? At that time, the Lord said unto Joshua, Make these sharp knives. At that time, God doesn't say, Let's prepare for war. Make spears, make swords, build some shields, put some armor. Ne, eh, be ready, be ready. Form battle formations. Get ready. We are about to fight. Would you mind make knives? Make knives. Make knives. But these knives are not to stab your enemies with. These knives are for you. They are for you. So the Lord, the Lord says, make sharp knives. Not just any, I don't want blunt stuff. I want sharp knives. Because I want the cutting to be precise and quick. Or make sharp knives, Joshua. So Joshua right now, he's about to wound them and not the enemy. Today your enemies are not going to bleed. You are. No, the enemies today are not going to bleed. You are the one who's going to bleed today. You are the one who will be wounded today. You are the one who will need to recover today. Make sharp knives. Make sharp knives and get ready for battle. But this is a different kind of battle. It is a different kind of battle. The Bible says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of wickedness in high places. Brethren, we need to understand that some battles can only be won on our knees. That some battles, though, though we walk in the flesh, we don't walk after the flesh. Though we see the manifestation in the flesh, our battle is not in the flesh. Some things we can only deal with them on our knees. Some things we can only deal with them in the spirit. For though we walk in the flesh, we don't walk after the flesh. How can all of you try to deal with some things in the flesh? How can all of you try to deal with military problems in the flesh? How can all of you try to deal with rebellion in the flesh? Though we walk in the flesh, we don't walk after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, to cutting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. We don't walk after the flesh. The Bible tells us, and Paul says, we are on our way to throw us, but Satan hinder us. So Paul understands that I was on my way to minister, but some things happened in the flesh which hindered me from coming. And Paul interprets it as Satan. Let me announce to you there is a very real devil. There is a very real devil. He says, Satan hindered us. We want to come to you, but Satan hindered us. Some things in the flesh and blood but Satan hindering us. Sometimes we don't have to give counseling. We have to cast the devil out. Sometimes there's no, there's no counseling which will save you. There is a devil we must cast out. The Bible tells us about the woman who was crippled for 18 years. The Bible says she had the palsy. She was paralyzed. They call it the palsy. When Jesus goes to her in Luke 18, 
He says, on a Sabbath, about to heal this woman. He says, oh, not this, this woman, a daughter of Abraham, be healed from her infirmity on Sabbath. So Paul, so Jesus is telling us the meaning of rest in Sabbath. That our flesh needs to rest from its affliction. That Paul is telling us the true meaning of Sabbath is not ceasing from literal works, but our flesh needs to come to rest. Our minds need to rest. Because we are tormented wrestling. Oh, not this woman. And listen to what Jesus says. He says, be loose from that spirit of infirmity. Doctors come with their fancy terms, but it's a liberal palsy. They come with their fancy terms. They call it whatsoever. Jesus are the spirit of infirmity. Yeah. Which was binding a spinal cord. Are you being loose? Sometimes we need to cast the devil out. We do. Sometimes the back is not in the flesh. Sometimes. But here's the deal. Let it be by discernment. We don't label every problem against Satan. But let us discern the devil. The devil is at work. Let us be able to discern. We don't go religiously. Get Satan, get Satan, get Satan. But sometimes it is the devil. That's why we need discernment. That there is a strong hand of darkness here. A strong hand. The Bible tells us, at that time, we love it. At that time, the Lord said unto Joshua, make sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. He said, circumcise them again the second time. What does this mean? That if a man was circumcised, he circumcised twice. Is that what it means? No. It does not mean that. The word again speaks about the restoration. That I'm bringing back this thing called circumcision. So it is a revisiting of elementary principles. Here is the deal. There are those who left Egypt. They were circumcised. There are those who were born in the wilderness. They were not circumcised. All those who were born in Egypt died. All those who were born in the wilderness are not circumcised. So now the Lord says, before we can enter Canaan, in fact, this is the third time, the third time in scripture, what that we read about the entire nation being circumcised. It is the third time in the Bible, what that we read about the entire nation being circumcised in one day. The second time we read about it, it is in Exodus, on the, on, when Passover was about to happen. That make sure everyone is circumcised. So we see the scriptures, and again, they are about to have Passover here. So we see the scriptures, the circumcision was a prerequisite for Passover. So in the Old Testament, circumcision was a prerequisite to partake of the Passover. But we have come to the New Testament. Circumcision is a result of Passover. Circumcision follows Passover. So Passover happens immediately after Passover. There is a circumcision of the flesh which follows. We cannot partake of the body and blood and remain in the flesh. There is a circumcision which happens. We can profess Jesus and Lord and not encounter his sword. We cannot encounter him as Lord and not encounter the sword. Never. That's why at the end of the chapter, which I will not get to, because now you like my hog. Amen. Amen. So I can't get there. But what do we see? It's a phrase. It's a phrase. Amen. 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 And this man when he appears, he has his sword drawn out. Just waiting there. And then Joshua approaches him alone. And when Joshua approaches this man, he asks him a question. Are, are you for us? Or against us? Are none of the above? I am here as the captain of the Lord's host. You see, when you enter Canaan, it's not on our, on our own agenda. Are you for us? 
No, it is not about you. Mm-mm. When God opens the door to Canaan, it's not for you, so the message. Yes. So it's not about you. Are you for us or against us? Are none of the above? Yes. Are none of the are The question I'm asking is wrong. I am here as the captain of the Lord's host. You are for me. You are, I'm not for you, you are for me. I, I'm here as captain of the Lord's host. Circumcision has happened. We, we submit under his lordship. Not this generation who command God when they pray. I declare and declare God that right now you're going to break through for me. That right now, your prayer language must change. Tell me, are there results? Oh, tell me, are there results? Mm-mm. I know you're going to quote that because I don't want to go into that debate again. I, I, I can go into it very easily, Lord. But let me, let me summarize it for you are the results. Command the sun right now. Go, go. Show me are the results. This generation, we command God. We do not know his lordship. Who can even descend? Who can even say God has a now command the sun? Who knows nothing of his lordship? Hmm? And at that time, the Lord said unto Joshua, Make sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. Circumcision, the first time we open our circumcision, Genesis 17. Genesis 17, let's open our Bibles. Verse 10. Verse 10. Genesis 17 from verse 10 to 12. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man among you shall be circumcised. Everyone must be circumcised. And he shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin and it shall be for a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man child in your generations, he that is born in the house or born with money of any stranger, which is not thy seed. So everyone must be circumcised. Everyone, every male child must be circumcised. After they are born eight days later, they must be circumcised. This is what they would do when they would observe this principle. They would observe a child when they were born. And they would observe the nature of this child. Uh, Or is very quiet, or peaceful, or restless. They would prayerfully observe this child for eight days, observing the child. By this time, the child does not have a name. But they're observing. They observe and they observe and they observe. After eight days, they're circumcising after circumcising him, they now give him a name. That's why in scripture, everybody lived up to their own names. There's Akan. We'll read about him in Joshua. The first battle they lost was because of Akan. And what does the word Akan mean? Trouble. This guy brought trouble into the camp and they lost the first battle. Because they did not win every battle in Canaan. But they still possess the land. What is the principle? We're not going to win every battle. Sometimes we we'll wounded to reveal Akan in our midst. Because there is trouble in there. So Akan means trouble. But in Hosea 2.15, God says, I will take the valley of Akan and make it a door of hope. So now what is a valley? It is a depression. What is Akan? It is trouble. The Lord says, I will take the depression you have in trouble and I will use it as a door for hope. So God has a way in which he takes trouble and within trouble he orchestrates a way, a door. And I will take, I do not put the valley there, but I will take it for a door of hope. Yeah. The valley of Akan, the valley of trouble. Because Akan has troubled us. Mm. And they had to stone him. They had to stone him. So when a child is eight, years, eight days old, they circumcise him and they name him and they give him a name and the covenant is made. So what is the principle? After a child is born, you and I become born of the Spirit. You and I get born again 
on the eighth day, the number of resurrection, we, we, we identify with the resurrected life. When this happens, there must needs be a circumcision, a cutting away of the flesh. You cannot be in Christ and in the flesh. The Bible says, if you, if, you, if you live in the spirit, also walk in the spirit. Let your walk testify to your life. Let your walk testify to your faith. If you live in the spirit, also walk in the spirit. So we see a principle of circumcision now being introduced. What am I saying? No, it's not circumcising people. No, that is not what I'm saying. Even though Paul had to do it. The same Paul who says you don't need to be circumcised, circumcised Timothy. The same Paul, when they go to a certain place, like Timothy, but here we must circumcise you. And Paul circumcised Timothy. The same Paul who was preaching against it did it for the sake of the gospel. We don't be justified in the children. So you invoke a new name. So when circumcision happens, a name was given. When circumcision happens, we invoke a new name. Name denotes nature. We are assuming a new nature. So when God circumcises us, he's causing us to assume a new nature. Those of you who know biology, you understand that when circumcision happens to the male genitalia, there is a change in form. It does not remain the same. Because circumcision has happened. When God circumcises and removes excess flesh, we cannot be the same. We change in form. When God cuts away excess flesh, you change in form. But circumcision is painful. Circumcision is intimate. It is intimate. Circumcision happens in the areas no one sees. In the areas no one sees, Baba. There's no circumcision happens. And guess what? It is something only the Lord can see. Arribali. So now, how is this relevant to us? Why are you talking to circumcision about us? Colossians. Colossians 2. Verse 11 and 12. This is what the New Testament circumcision is. In whom also ye are circumcised with a circumcision made without hands. So now this is a different type of circumcision. A circumcision made without hands. In the putting out, in the putting off of the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him in baptism. Wherein ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who has raised him from the dead. You see, by water baptism, it's a symbolic action of spiritual circumcision. Of circumcision of the heart. It is a token of that water baptism. It's a token of that. Philippians 3, verse 3. Philippians 3, verse 3. For we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Here is the problem. Many of you are still relying on the flesh. You need a circumcision. The Bible says, Cursed is every man whose hope is in the flesh, who trusted in his right hand. Cursed is that man. Cursed is the man who relies on medication. Cursed is the man who relies on their salary. Cursed is the man who relies on other men. Cursed is the man whose hope is men. Whose hope is men. In any way, shape, or form, cursed is that person. The Lord once said something to me I'll never forget. That in the measure that we look towards men for help, in the same measure we fall out of the greater purposes of God. In the measure, Nasevez is a Rama word. In the measure that we look to men for help, in the same measure, 
we are falling out of the greater purposes of God. In the same measure. In the same measure. That's our chosen we will serve, God of Mammon. God puts Mammon on his level. Our chosen will serve me or Mammon. Choose. Mm. Solomon even comes with money answers all things. God answers all prayers. I'll choose what do you want. Me or Mammon. Yeah. Even though there are things money can do. But choose whom you will serve. So there needs to be a circumcision of our only hope is the Lord. Our only hope. There are idols in our hearts. Ezekiel 18 tells about idols, things we have made idols. Things that we have, things which are made. What is, what is an idol? An idol is something man crafted out of gold, out of silver, out of bronze, out of wood out of clay and says this is my God and they worship it what is an idol an idol is something man has created to replace God so an idol is anything which takes the place of God number one number two an idol is anything which is made of the hands some people worship their own achievements they worship their degrees they worship how they can sing They worship their cars, their own achievements, the works of their hands, idols, idolatry. You don't have to bow to a literal idol, but there are idols in our hearts. Remember what I said about about being able to manage success. Because we have we have learned how to deal with disappointment and failure. We have learned to keep a positive spirit. That is a good thing that we have learned. Now, how to deal with disappointment. But few of us have gotten to the place whereby we know how to handle success. We don't know how to be successful. When success comes, it's an oppression to others. When success comes, it is distraction to us. We are destroyed by our own success. Our own success is our downfall. Our breakthrough is our downfall. Our breakthrough. So, because we have not learned how to manage success. Because we have not learned contentment. You want abundance, but you don't know contentment. When abundance comes, you'll mismanage it. It'll consume you. And you ask for me because you ask so that you may consume it upon your last. Get James, and your prayers are not answered because you're asking God a miss so that you can consume those things upon your last. Some prayers, God says no. But I'm the right to say no, I'm going to answer the prayer. I'm more offended. That's what one next week. It's fine, but the word will prick you. Amen. And I will change your prayer language. Sure. You ask a miss because you have to consume it upon your own last. Hey, you know, I need a breakthrough. Shem, you know when I go clubbing. Amen. You can't afford like the mutu trailer. You're too rough. But you need a breakthrough. We know why. So you can consume it upon your own last. We have not learned how to handle success. We can't handle it. We can't handle it. Like your success no? is a statement to others. Your statement, why can't you eat if you know? Come on, why can't you eat? Even you're giving, you're, now I'm a finance of the kingdom. I should not. Yeah. <laughs> hey. You think you, you can finance the kingdom of God? Sure. That way you can finance it. Who does giving benefit actually? Who does it benefit? Hmm? How does God, because God does measure giving. He does. Hey, God looks at the heart. Yes, he looks at the heart. I want to say you are right. I want to say I agree. He's looking at the heart right now. And he measures. And when God measures, he looks at what remains. The only time Jesus responded to someone's giving was by how much remained in, in her pocket. When everyone gave out of abundance, who gave more than her? Physically, but just as she gave more. As she gave more. Why? Because it was out of lack. 
Because of what remained after she did that? It's about proportion. Cursed is a man who trusts in the flesh. Who trusts in the flesh. And we see it when we get things of the flesh. We see it. We see it. Who's armed in the flesh? Who trusted in the flesh? But we are the circumcision which is not of the flesh. That's why others worship him in spirit and in truth. Others worship in the flesh. We have become so carnal and fleshly. There is no God factor in our language. Sure. Like, you can even say from our speech, you can even in their speech. It translates in their life. Come on, what happened to trusting God? I'm not talking about naming and claiming, I'm talking about trusting God. What happened to trusting God? What happened to that? So, it is the removal of the flesh. It is the removal of the flesh and it's painful, but necessary. Acts chapter 7. I'm just giving a foundation for this. So, New Testament circumcision is a fulfillment of the Old Testament circumcision. Acts 7 verse 8. And he gave him the covenant of circumcision. So Abraham begat Isaac and circumcised him the eighth day and begat Jacob. And Jacob beget the twelve patriarchs. So circumcision is a token, is a seal, is a sign. Of the new covenant. Oh, silence. Because we haven't, we haven't read the New Testament. Go and read Galatians 4. Go and read Galatians 4. Go and read Romans 3. Read them. Circumcision is a token, it's a seal, and it's a sign of the New Testament. Not circumcision of the flesh, but of the heart. What God does in your heart is a token of the New Testament. What God works in your heart is a seal of the New Testament. What God works in your heart is it's a sign of the New Testament. Arvalevis, where is that verse? Joshua chapter 5. Chapter 5. Um, verse okay before Joshua 5 ne? let's open Psalms 51 um, Psalms 51 In fact, the whole Psalm 61, but listen to what David says. Verse 6. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward part, and in the hidden part shalt thou make me to know wisdom. So, what is the real circumcision of the heart? God requires truth in our innermost being. God requires truth in our heart. You can lie to us, you can deceive us, but God sees the heart. God doesn't see as men sees. God sees the heart. So God requires truth in the innermost part of the heart. God requires truth there. He requires truth in it. Look at verse number 9. Number 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. So create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. This is David's cry for the New Testament. I don't want to be a believer. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a right spirit within me. He's praying a prayer before his time because he can never have it. But nonetheless, he's praying for it nonetheless. 
It is a cry for the New Testament. I create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And this is something flesh can never understand. This is something those who are working them, they can never understand that justification is by faith and by faith alone. They can never understand it. They can't. That's why the writer of Hebrews, he says strong need belongs to them who are full of age. Not you apostolic people thinking three dimensions is strong meat. Strong meat is a new covenant that the Jews cannot receive it. If a strong meat belongs to them who are full of age, what is strong meat? The New Testament. It is the New Testament. It is the New Testament. So David is crying and creating me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Give us a circumcision of the heart. God deserves truth. God deserves truth. A circumcision in the heart. Jeremiah 9. I'm just giving a backdrop. Ne? Uh, 20, 26. 25 and 26. Jeremiah 9, 25 and 26. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will punish them which I'm circumcised with the uncircumcised. Sure. Egypt and Judah and Edom and the children of Ammon and Moab and all that are in the utmost corners shall dwell in the wilderness. For these are nations uncircumcised and all the house of Israel are uncircumcised in their heart. So God says, though you are circumcised in the flesh, you are just like the rest of them and I will destroy you with them. And are just like the rest of them. Because the circumcision God was really looking for was the one of the heart. Was the one of the heart. So this is an instruction God is giving in this season to all ministers of the word. And Joshua, take sharp knives. Joshua, take sharp knives. Sharpen them, sharpen them. Sharpen them and prepare for a circumcision of the heart. But understand that the conviction is the work of the Holy Spirit and not men. You can never convict anyone. That conviction is the work of the Holy Spirit. Our aim is not to convict, our aim is to convey truth. We speak truth in revival, piercing the innermost being. That is what we do. In the midst of revival, we speak truth. And this truth pierces man to his innermost being. We need to speak truth which will transition us from Gilgal to Jordan. You know, from Gilgal to the promised land. We need to speak truth. In Gilgal, they to remain there. I shouldn't say no Gilgal, but they to remain there. Six weeks, 40 days. They had to remain in Gilgal. They had to remain there until they were completely healed. They would apply some anointing oil to help with the healing process. And they remained there. It's important that while you're still bleeding, you don't go to battle. It's important that while you're still bleeding, you don't mean it on the fat. It is important that while you are still bleeding, in fact, you can't even consummate after, after circumcision because it's painful. You can't, no matter how you try. Men are calling themselves fathers, but they've not been circumcised. But they are fathers, but they've not been circumcised. But they are fathers, but they're still bleeding. Bleed him on the pulpit. We see a trail of blood. In a style, a heel. Heel. You are bleeding on people. Heel. We are away now to decode. Heel. Heel. You are bleeding on us. There is a trail of people with specks of your blood on them. With specks of your blood upon them. You don't leave Gilgal until you are healed. You remain in Gilgal for as long as it takes. 
For as long as it takes, you remain in Gilgal. You need to ascend the mountain of foreskins. I'm ahead of myself. But Joshua took all those foreskins, over six million people, and put it in a mountain, the hill of foreskin. I can't get there. But there needs to be a circumcision of the heart. There needs to be a circumcision of the heart. And I know you're all waiting for me to chow sin. I'm not going to keep on sin. There needs to be a circumcision of the heart. Your heart needs to be right. I know you're waiting for that point. Yeah, I can't. But no, I can't be next. Let us turn on our feet. I want to read one verse, ne? verse 4, Joshua. Verse 4, Joshua. Joshua chapter 5, verse 4. So right now, we are still doing a survey you know, for getting circumcision and stuff like that. And this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise. All the people that came out of Egypt that were mules, even all the men of war died in the wilderness, by the way, after they came out of Egypt. The old generation never made it there. They departed Egypt, but they never entered Canaan. The circumcision made with hands did not guarantee entrance. So, what is my principle? Those who were circumcised in Egypt ne, died in the wilderness. You have to circumcise afresh. What is the principle? God will always raise someone else to take the land. We are not indispensable. It is the time to attack with Emmanuel. Circumcision. God will always raise someone else. That is the principle. I know you've been taught that you are the center of the universe. You are not. I know you are not. Mourn over it. Grieve. You are not. And come to reality. Does God love you? Yes. Now that he does. Are you the center of the no? <laughs> no. Like I said, it is for the purposes. It is for the promise. It is for the message. When the door opens, it is for the message. It is for the message to enter Canaan. It is for the message, not the messenger. Another messenger can still deliver the message. Another one can still deliver the message. So glow with your gift. And glow with your gift. God will raise another. God will raise God will raise another. God will raise God will raise another. And the, continue, the kingdom continues. But the kingdom has been continued for 2,000 years. Born and it's been going strong. You think we're in only one? Because you're not recognized at some conference, the kingdom's gonna stop. But it can be the best thing on the far. This is probably bit of a bim bum and stuff like that. The point when we are blessed. But I'm not blessed or we're not impressed. devil is a lie. <laughs> but what is the principle? The principle is that God will always raise another. There is no shortage of people. Joshua should tell us that Moses, my servant, is dead. Get up, Joshua. 
Pela Moses, Moses was the one supposed to lead them there. Nelly Moses. Moses disobeyed. Die. Joshua, go. Take them there. Go, Joshua. Go. I'll magnify you like I magnified Moses. Go. And God magnified Joshua. And all Israel feared him. And he led them into the promised land. God can always raise another. God can always raise another. But you can even, even withhold your tithe, withhold your money. The kingdom is still going to continue. Hmm. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for the word. We thank you for the blessed time we had in your presence today. We thank you that you had your own agenda with us. You had your own program with us. You had your own encounter. You have planned for us. Father, we submit ourselves wholly and completely to the purposes and plan of God. Dear God, we pray that though you have wounded us, we know you will heal us. Though you have smitten us, you will bind us up. Father, we pray the circumcisers while we are still young. It hurts more when we are older. Circumcise us now in Gilgal. Before we were in Jericho. Because it will hurt more. It will cost us more. It will compromise us. Do it now, O oh God. Hurtful as it is, painful as it is, take us through the process. Take us through the process. As you commanded Joshua, oh God, I pray, that circumcise the children of Israel again as they are restoring us to the first principles of the oracles of God. As they are restoring us to fresh principles, let us revisit them again. Let us walk in them again. Let us emphasize them again. Let us be rooted in them again. We thank you, O Father, for the word. Father, we just want to honor you with our lives. We want to honor you so much, O God. Let worship rise from our hearts. Let worship rise in how we live, in our walk. Like Paul said, let, us, let our lives be a sweet savour unto you. For Father, you require more than a song from us. You require more than a song. You require more than a sermon. You require more from us. Father, we want to walk in fullness. We want to attain all you have set forth for us to attain. Father, we understand that it is never too late to be who we could have been. Father, we want to walk in it, oh God. Restore us again. Have your way with us. Have your way with this generation. Have your way with us, oh God. Have your way with us. Father, we are not ashamed that we are adults being circumcised as children. For it is necessary. For it is necessary. Because the season demands it. The season demands it. Canaan demands it. The promises demand it. The purpose of God demand it. It is not about us. Remove the flesh. That it can be well pleasing unto you. That we can be well pleasing unto you, O Father. We bless you, O God. We lift your name on high. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Uh, MC.